Hello, hello, hello. This is Minister Willie Ray Allison Jr. This is Prophet Minister Elder Willie Ray Allison Jr. on today. And this is uh, August the 8th on a Monday, Monday afternoon, August the 8th, 2022. And I come to bring you the word on this afternoon. It's around about the hour, uh, 2 o'clock hour, 2 something, uh, maybe 2.22 this afternoon. But I come to bring you the word on today. And the word on today is coming from the Holy Bible, King James Version, please. And, and we live in the day and time, you know, this is the modern day and time. And this is still the New Testament. New Testament, you know, there never was a, uh, the end of the New Testament in, old, in, in the Bible, in the New Testament. It never was a, the end in the Bible. And when it comes to the book of Acts, and and because we are living still in the New Testament time according to the Holy Bible. And the Bible let us know that Jesus is soon to come. And the word of God is being fulfilled every day. Every single day, God proved his word to be true. In spite of all this hate and injustice and People not liking us, true preachers sent by God. And yes, I'm a preacher that's called. I'm a preacher that's called by God. And those of us preachers that are truly called by God, people hate us for telling the truth. And they call it the, the, the truth to hate speech on this day and time. They call it telling the truth to hate speech. And they uh they don't like us. They like the prosperity preachers. You know, many of y'all, y'all love y'all prosperity preachers, the positive preaching that you call it, preaching positive messages. As you may call it, and telling it, telling it the way you want them to tell it, instead of them telling it like it is, like the true prophets tell it like it is, the true saints, the true prophets, the true preachers that are sent by God, we tell it like it is. So y'all don't like us, and and they were that same way about Jesus. They didn't like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, cause He told it like it is, and they didn't like Him for it. He told the truth on the religious people. Just like if we were living in this world today in the form of a man and preach what we preach, he'll preach better than us. But if he was here now, he'll preach that you religious people. He'll tell y'all like it is in these churches. Y'all wouldn't want Jesus in y'all churches neither. Y'all would, would want Jesus to be dead. And, and y'all know when people don't like you, you know, they don't like you and folks hate you so much, they want you dead. And people don't love you like they say they love you. Love is just a byword now. Many people say, I love you. The devil say, I love you with goat horns on his head. And he'll say, I love you looking like a goat. And he'll say, I love you with horns on his head sticking up like the devil or whatever. He can look pretty too. The devil know how to look beautiful. The devil's one of God's most beautiful angels in heaven. And, and, you know, before he got cast out. And the devil was beautiful. He, he was the best singer. He was the best instrument player. In heaven, he was the most beautiful looking angel. All that, you know, all that y'all like in this world today. The worldliness of the worldly world <laughs> is how you look. Is you beautiful? Is you handsome? And you got the, the biceps, uh, you got the shape, the figure, the thighs, the, uh, the certain kind of behind or the front of you. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the world, the world, the eyes, you know, the, the natural thing, the corner world, the corner mind. The worldly world, the worldly mind, you know. And we have to ask God to help us. Those of us that are God's preachers, those of us that are God's people, saints, Christians, we have to ask Jesus to help us in this kind of world that we live in today. Because like we ain't got no help but in Jesus. The only hope we have is in Jesus in this kind of world that we live in today. And that's why I say poor babies, poor children growing up. In a world like this, poor babies that y'all have. Thank God he took mine. But poor babies, a blessing. Yeah, the Bible says a blessing. But for you to have those babies, they're your joy of your life. God meant for them to be the joy of your life. Instead of some people acting like they're not the joy. But those of you who love your babies, that's good. That is a blessing. But God know what kind of world we living in. And God know what I'm saying when I say poor babies in a world like this. Poor children being born in a world like this, a world for the hate, 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 hate. And people choose who they hate. People choose who they want to hate. And then people choose who they like and who they love. Now, folks are so crazy, they, they'll, they'll just go all out with it. If they hate you, they go all out with it. If they, if they love and like you, they go all out with it. You know, they make statues of people that they like now. Oh, they love you. When they love you and like you, they don't even make a statue of you now. <laughs> You're a celebrity or whatever you are. 
they'll make a statue of you and they'll they'll worship you now. You know, just because they like you in the, in the church house, they'll worship you instead of Jesus sometimes. They'll put Jesus aside a little while. People love you on the, on the internet, on the, on social media. They'll put they'll put you up there. You know, they'll make a statue now about the people they love now and, and like the worldly folks and the church folks too in the church and like them just worldly though corner mind. Come on, y'all. You love those rich preachers, those millionaire preachers. Love them. Y'all worship them. The nowadays, I see they'll start making statues of folks now. Or something they'll make of them. Woo! And they could be dead and gone. Died, passed away, or whatever. Even they're alive, you know. Woo! Celebrities, whoever you are, who, you, who they like, who people choose to like. Who people choose to love, see. But when they hate you... It goes all out too. I mean, they, they big with that hate. Folks are big with the hate in the church house. They don't know Jesus in the church house. They big with the hate everywhere. Job, neighborhood, street, highway, byway, stoves, gas station, wherever, white house, black house, whatever house, your house, whatever house, apartments, wherever, neighborhood. If they hate you, they going to show it. They're going to go way out of there. And they can smile. A lot of them will show they hate. And, 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 and a lot of them will only pretend that they hide in their hate. They'll smile in your face like that they want to be friends. <laughs> They'll smile and show their teeth and play like they want to be friends. Just be grinning and grinning and not your friend. Everybody grin, not your friend. They'll grin in your face, hug you and kiss you and everything else with you. Shake your hand and do your little, that little knock, that little uh, knuckle to knock of the new thing now. You know, you knock our knuckles together. That's a new thing they do now this modern day and time. That's a new thing now. They'll do all that and still hate you. And they want you dead. Now, when people hate you, they want you dead. They want you to be dead. They might not say it with their mouths, but it is in their mind and it's in their heart. And who knows the heart? But the Lord God Almighty, he's the one that knows the heart. And you can see it with your mouth, you can lie, 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 lie. This word is full of liars, all kind of liars everywhere. Church house, jobs, streets, gas stations, stole neighborhoods, in the, in the house, every, every, in every house, a, a neighborhood, an apartment complex, wherever, <laughs> town, home, car, truck, vehicles, liars are everywhere. They're in the government, they're in the news, they're in the... And they move with them, a lot of them lies, documents, lies, 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 lies. The only truthful thing in this world, mainly, is the Holy Bible, please. King James Version, please. God's word is the truth. He is the truth. Jesus said, the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, said, He's the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to God the Father, but by Him only. I have to pray. We have to pray. Saints have to pray. We have to pray. They'll do things to provoke us to anger. They laugh and blame us for it. They'll do things to make us mad. Get in our way. Walk in our way. Intentionally walk in front of our automobile. Intentionally walk in front of our ne uh, automobile in the, in the driveway or in the neighborhood or streets or wherever. Intentionally drive their cars in our way. Intentionally uh, slow up in front of us and, and, and on the streets or highway. Intentionally. Do things intentionally, and then if we get angry and mad, they blame us for it. <laughs> Come on, y'all. And then they'll make that they don't get mad about nothing. And God knows, God knows, and the devil knows too, it'll make y'all mad. <laughs> what will make them mad? God knows, and the devil knows. All they got to do is push a certain button, they'll get mad and go and fly off the handle and act up too. Come on, y'all. They'll, they'll cuss, though they'll cuss, though they'll send us, they'll cuss. Though they're not trained or they supposed to be in the church house or cuss, all you gotta do is push a certain button and they'll come out and then the devil know what make you mad too. <laughs> Y'all be trying to make the preacher mad. The devil know what make you mad. Anybody better not miss your grandkids better. They, they better not. They better not should they. <laughs> Ain't nobody better miss your man, grandkids get, and your great grandkids and on and on. Or whoever you love and like the most. Nobody better not touch and miss with them should they. But the devil know what make you mad too. Y'all love to try to make the preacher mad and want to make the preacher act up. But see, God and the devil know what will make you act up too. And push that certain button in your life, in your mind, in your eyes, in your hearing. <laughs> yeah, but see, the Bible said what goes around comes around. But see, the topic here, I'm getting ready to read from the Holy Bible. 
I'm going to bring you the word today again from the Holy Bible. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 9, 9 verse 27, it said, As is appointed unto men once to die after death. Once to die, but not to this, the judgment. It's appointed unto men once to die. It go for men, women, boys, and girls. It's appointed unto men. It's an appointment. Unto men wants to die, but after this, the judgment. What judgment? You're going to stand before God. Now, you can judge the preacher. You can judge my past. Judge somebody else's past. And you need to judge your own past also. You can judge everybody's past, the sins and the wrong that you saw them do that you want to point out. And that you want to hold against them till they die or till you die or till the end of the world. Hear me. But this appointment is appointed unto men, first of all, to die at the death, the judgment. We have many appointments in this world. It's appointments at day, appointments at night. Uh, we have uh, different appointments for a job, appointment for a doctor's appointments, job appointments, uh, appointment to go in for interview, appointment to go in to a certain meeting, uh, uh, business meeting, even in the church appointments and uh, meetings at church, uh, different appointments, a uh, lot of the appointment, council meeting appointments, is all kind of appointments in this world. And we can have day and night all kind of appointments. You arrange to even meet somebody. That's an appointment. You arrange to meet somebody somewhere uh, in the parking lot or at their house or at a store or a gas station or wherever. A uh, movie theater, whatever. You well, you have an appointment to meet somebody somewhere. You have a plan. That's an appointment. And we all in God's plan some kind of way. And if God give us all a choice. We have to choose what plan we're going to take. We have to choose a road. We want a certain road. We have to choose a road we're going to take. And Jesus spoke about different these two different roads. Ain't no whole lot of roads. But he, Jesus spoke of two different roads, not a whole lot of them. Ain't no such things that many roads lead to God. That's a lie. Ain't no many roads lead to God. That is a lie. There's only one road leads to God. There's only one way that leads to God. And there's only that same one way that leads to heaven where God's throne is. And where he is, it's the Lord Jesus Christ, God's son, is the only way and the truth. The truth, the truth, the truth in the life. The truth that many people don't like. Hallelujah. He's the way, the truth that many people don't like. And he's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the life. He's the eternal life. He's the real life. That life you live in, that high life, whatever you want to call it, high life, your liquid dope life or whatever liquid dope is, that real whiskey and fermented wine, that's not the life. The real life is in Jesus Christ. The real life is in the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the real life. Eternal life which starts right here when we accept Jesus for our personal Lord and Savior. When we see Jesus Christ. God's Son for our personal Lord and Savior. That's the real life, which is eternal, that will never end. But the Bible said what I just read, it's appointed unto men. That go for men, that go for women, boys and girls, to die. We see people dying every day. People are dying in this world every day. They're dying every day, they dying by day, and they're dying by night. Many, many different ways. Nobody's going to escape death. Nobody lets you go in a rapture and, and you're a saint first. You got to be saved. And ain't, they gonna, ain't gonna be that many left here <laughs> that's gonna go in the rapture compared to so many of us that got, got to die and leave this world no matter how much you don't want to think about it. A lot of y'all don't want to talk about death. You don't want to think about death and you want to just live your life the way you want to live it and many of you will pretend and masquerade and put on a mask and Pretend at the church house. And but you'll judge somebody else. We see, if we don't do something to please you, you'll judge us. If we don't do like you want us to do, like you think we're supposed to do, put up with your racism. Put up with your racist word. Put up with your harassing us and following us everywhere we go. Put up with your following us to our home, to our job, getting in our way. If we don't put up with that and accept that, you want to judge us. Come on. <laughs> if we don't accept your racist words or racist name calling or cussing us out 
or disrespecting us, you want to judge us. Come on, you want to judge us if we're not going to accept your evil ways of sinning against us. You want to judge us if we don't do like you want us to do. If we don't go with the certain women you want us to go with. If we're not going to play off on our wives with your certain women you want us to play off on. Woohoo! Hello. Then you want to judge us. And then you want to bring up our past. If we did, you know, we, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the sins of the past that Jesus had forgiven and washed away, you'll still bring that up. You sinners and you hypocrites in the church and you sinners outside the church. Y'all bring up the past of sins that Jesus has forgiven and washed away with his sins. I mean, with his blood. He washed away our sin with his blood. And you'll bring up our sins and Jesus washed away our sins with his blood, I'm saying. The sins that he have washed away is what I'm saying. And y'all bring that up. Bring that back up. Because he's the son of God who suffered and died for our sins. Rose again from the dead to save us from our sins. And you'll bring up our sins. He don't have no sin. There's no sin in Jesus. Never was, never will be. But his blood washed away our sins. But you will bring our sins back up to try to condemn us, try to judge us, and think you're going to make somebody backslide because you talk about it. You ain't going to make this preacher backslide. And all the God true children that want to hold on and stay with Jesus to the end, Jesus is our keeper. <laughs> and talking about us not going to make us backslide. Judging us not going to make us backslide. Bringing up our past sin is not going to make us backslide. Sure not. We still not going to backslide. We still not gonna turn around when our mind is made up and we know we're gonna stay with Jesus no matter how you talk about us, no matter how y'all talk about us and judge us and find fault in us. Or thank you do, or which way you do, if you do, we still not gonna backslide because God has forgiven us sins of our past. He has forgiven us. By the blood of Jesus, we are forgiven and our sins are washed away by Jesus' blood. Hello. So we plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus against all the demons of condemnation and judging. In the neighborhoods, stores, gas stations, churches, <laughs> jobs, I plead the blood of Jesus against all you judging people. I plead the blood of Jesus against all judging words. I plead the blood of Jesus against all the demons of judging and criticism toward me and the saints. I plead the blood of Jesus against all you condemning folks. They're trying to judge us and you not saved. I plead the blood of Jesus against you all. And I plead the blood of Jesus over me. And over me, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I plead the blood of Jesus over my possession that God has blessed me with that he has given me that the devil don't want me to have. The Bible said jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Y'all are so jealous. Full of jealousy because we won't do what you want us to do. We won't go with who you want us to go with. You want us to backslide, and we won't backslide. So you're jealous of what God has blessed us with by living for him. You're jealous. And the Bible says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. And what that mean? It, you wish us dead. That's another way of wishing us dead, too. You're so jealous of us, you want us to be dead. Y'all also for the hate and jealousy, to you want us to be dead. But we're going to live as long as... As God wants us to live in the name of Jesus, we're going to live as long as Jesus wants us to live in his name, in the name of Jesus. We're going to live as long as the Lord God wants us to live, no matter how y'all want us to be dead. Y'all want God to kill us, but he ain't going to kill you for your sin. <laughs> y'all want God to kill us because you're jealous of us. You want God to kill us because he has blessed us for living for him. And preaching for him and serving him. And and, and, he, and we have been seeking him for so many years. Those other, even just a short time. He started blessing those who even turned to him. Even in a short time. And y'all are jealous. Because you still living in sin. And you jealous to see us not doing what you're doing. You jealous because we won't do what you do. We won't take no cancer rates in our mouth. We won't take no dry tobacco leave in our mouth. You jealous and mad because we ain't going to do what you do. We're not going to drink and take no liquid drugs, beer, whiskey, and fermented wine, liquid drugs. That's what it is, drugs. That's just drugs, legal to buy, legal to sell, that the police ain't going to put you in jail for, because a lot of them drinking that too. Uh-oh. We see, that, that, that y'all mad because we won't do that. That's all. 
and you're mad because you don't want to live for God and you're in trouble with God. And you want us to be in trouble with God, but we're not going to be in trouble with God as long as we stay with him. We're not going to be in trouble with God, but you send a man, send a woman, send a boy, send a girl, and hypocrites in the church. We're not going to be in trouble with God with you. As long as we stay with Jesus, stay with the Bible, stay with the truth of God's word, we're not going to be in trouble with God with you. We're going to hold on to Jesus to the end till he calls us on the glory. You hear me? Now the Bible says, appointed unto men wants to die at the death of judgment. You got to make this appointment. I don't care how rich you are, how famous you are, everybody loves you and like you. Hello. Make a statue about you, a statue of you. <laughs> don't make no difference. You got to make this appointment. Now people can make a statue about you and a lot of these people be dead and gone. You be dead and gone and died and gone on and your and your your body is, is turning into dust, is is uh turning into a skeleton. Your beautiful body, whatever it look like, is turning into a skeleton in the grave or wherever, or you cremated or whatever. Somebody cream not you cremated, but somebody else cremated, and your body could just go just just disappear or whatever kind of way. You hear me? But your soul, you gotta give an account to God. Your soul and your spirit, you gotta give an account to God when you die. That's the judgment. You're going to stand before God. You're going to have a whole lot of friends. Y'all got so many people liking y'all. Everybody like you at church. Everybody like you in your job. Everybody like you in the whole city. Everybody like you in the whole state. Everybody like you in all over America. Everybody like you all over the world. How many How many seven celebrities folks have, have known through the years? Everybody like them. Everybody loved certain ones that have passed away now. But they died, didn't they? All them people y'all love, they still died. Some of the people I, I used to love and like, they, they died. The celebrities, they died. They couldn't stay here forever. And you not going to stay here forever. And your babies, when they grow up or whatever way they leave, or however, however how long God choose, or whatever their appointment is to live in this world, we don't know how long your babies and grandbabies are going to live. Hello? And you don't know either. But you, whatever, they got to go. Whoever born in this world, the babies, we were once babies. Those of us that are grown, we used to be babies. We all got to go, whether it's the babies, the grown people, young people, old people, middle-aged people. We got to go one day. We got to go. We got to leave this world. Like that old spiritual or church song, gospel song, we got to move. <laughs> when the Lord get ready, we got to move. When the Lord get ready, we got to move. When the Lord get ready, I got to move. When the Lord get ready, you got to move. That's an old church son. That's the truth. And what that means is we got to move out this world until another one. We got to, and what it means by another one, it's talking about our soul is either going to heaven or we going to hell. That's what that means, moving out. Uh-huh. You ain't gonna come back no a lizard. You're not gonna come back in another form like a lizard or a snake or a spider. You're not gonna come back in another form like a little uh ladybug. You're not gonna come back like that. You're not gonna come back in another form. Ain't no such thing as an incarnation, whatever you call that thing. Ain't no such thing as we are uh, evolved from monkeys. No, God made Adam and Eve. And it wasn't Adam and Steve either. God made a man and a woman, Adam and Eve. He didn't, we didn't evolve from no gorilla. We didn't evolve from no monkey, none of us. God said, I created man. God created us in his image. God created Adam and Eve. That's our full parents. That's everybody full parents from way back in the Garden of Eden. The book of Genesis and the Bible. That's all our parents. We all, we kin folks in that way. <laughs> all of us, we kin folks in that way. We all come from Adam and Eve. We didn't evolve. And it ain't no such thing coming back something else. Ain't coming back a lizard. None of that. No, 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 no. The Bible's right. Somebody else is wrong. Hello. Evolution is wrong. Evolution is a lie. Reincarnation is a lie. Coming back another thing or somebody else. That's a lie. When we leave here, the Bible says, appointed unto men wants to die, then after death, the judgment, after we die, it's not over. It's not over. You just having your fun. You party hard in and you just do what you want to do in this life. And you think, you think, well, when it's all done, you just lay back and somebody cover you up with a cover or whatever, with a blanket. And that's the end. No, mm -mm, it's not the end. When we all die, it's not the end. The Bible said in hell, the rich man, the rich man in the Bible, lift up his eyes. You hear me? 
He might have thought it was, so he was rich. How many people are rich today? So many rich people, celebrities, the people we like and all that we love and have loved that have passed away and that have died and gone because they couldn't stay here forever. Mom and daddy can't stay here forever. Sisters and brothers can't stay here forever. Me and you, nobody, we can't stay here forever. Your babies can't stay here forever. It's born. You hear me? And we all die of different ages. We all have died. Different people have died, I'm saying. Different ages have died. Some have died babies. Some have died children. Some have died teenagers. Some have died all different ages. Old and young have died. God has proven that his word is true and not a lie. God has proven that his word is sure. Whether you doubt it or not, it's still coming to pass. It is still happening today and tonight. We all got to leave this world. You hear me? God do answer this prayer. God do fulfill this word. God's word is sure. Come on. But when you leave this world, it's not over. God wants everybody to know it is not over and you're not coming back a lizard or whatever kind of form. <laughs> It's over when you die and God don't raise you back up from the dead. It's over. It's appointed unto men wants to die. Men, women, boys, and girls, they are dying to prove God's word is true every day and night. And your soul is either going to heaven or you going to hell. That's to every race, every color skin, every person, no matter what you look like, what color your skin, God made us all. Jesus suffering and died on that cross for all mankind, Jesus suffered and died on that cross, and he rose again from the dead to save men, women, boys, and girls from their sins and to give us all salvation from sin and from going to hell. You hear me? Woohoo! Now, a lot of preachers don't preach to that y'all love. They preach prosperity. They rich millionaire preachers, and y'all love them to pieces. Come on. But the true gospel is Jesus came to save us from going to hell. There is a place called hell. There's a place called H-E-L-L, -L, a place called hell, a burning fire. It's a place of a burning fire, a burning fire, a burning fire. And Jesus said, well, the worm died not. The worm is on the skin. He's on the skin. In there, everything, look, everything is real. It ain't no look real. It is real. Come on, and it seems like you being your be, it'd be like you in your natural body down now. Look like everything is so real, and the, and the, and it let us know this. And the Bible let us know this that the spiritual world is more real than the natural world that we see with the natural eye. Everything we see now with the natural eye, it's real, but it's not even as real as the spiritual world because what we see with our natural eye every day and night. And y'all, y'all go by what you see, right? Right. But this is gonna pass away. See, it's real. Yeah. Our natural eye, we see it. God made us in the natural. You know, this natural body he gave us, that is. But he gave us all the soul and spirit. But this natural eye, yeah, we see it. It's real. But the thing about it, it's gonna pass away. Everything we see, Jesus said, even the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Come on, and the and the lust of other things, and come on, it's going to pass away because Jesus is going to burn all this up. God going to burn everything up that we see. Plus, we got to be, you know, our body got to go back to the dust and be destroyed and gone forever. This natural body that we in right now, it's going to be gone. Natural face, everything. Your pretty face, your pretty, beautiful looks. Everybody call you beautiful. Those that do, you know. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. We always, we always call them women beautiful, right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And y'all y'all women call the men whatever you want to call them, you know. With their bodies. But all that, the fine bodies, the, the, the beauty, and all the looks, the skin color, the natural things, it's going to pass away. It's going to go back to the dust. It's going to turn into a skeleton. It's going to be corrupt. It's going to get stinky and corrupt and turn back to the dust. Turn into a skeleton and go away in a blib in a bibliot, in other words. Come on, y'all. It's going to be gone forever that we see in the natural eye. But the spirit man, the soul, this is what's going to last forever. The spiritual things that we don't see all the time, like we see the natural things, that's what's going to last forever. And the Bible said God is a spirit. 
And the Bible said God is the father of spirits. Hello, he made us all what that means. And the spirit of us, the soul of us, is what's going to last forever. And when our body die, and they do die, people have left this world, some screaming and hollering. Some people might not believe that, but other folks, they know what I'm talking about. They've seen it for real and heard it for real. Many people have left this world screaming and hollering because they're on their way to hell. Some people left this world and they saw the fire around their bed. They saw their spiritual realm before they got in their spiritual realm. Hello, before they died. They saw their spiritual realm before they died on their deathbed. I've heard about it. I had some old friends tell me about how they saw uh, people die on their deathbed. Some people screaming and hollering, dying on their deathbed. Some said, literally, for real, it ain't funny. It ain't nothing funny about this. Ain't nothing funny about that place called hell. You hear me? Nothing. And them people said, my friend told me she saw this, this man was dying. Other men and women died. And they saw a little man around the bed with horns on their head. And some saw a little man just come in there every day while they was dying. Came in every day. You know, some people, they put them on, you know, what they, whatever they call it. You know, they know folks getting ready to die. There's a name for it, you know. And they get ready to die. And they, the doctor said they're going to die that week or they're going to die that day or they're going to die most likely, I heard that they say they're going to die a certain week. And some while they was dying that certain week, some said they saw a man come in their room every day while they were dying. He come in and just sit there and look at them. Even right there at the Vernon Hospital, it wasn't my former pastor, though, but it was somebody else. Said they saw a man come there. A uh, preacher I used to know used to go visit someone at the Veteran Hospital right there in Oak Cliff, Dallas, Texas. And said that man would come look at him every day. He said, look, it's a man that always come in here. He looks at me every day because he was dying. And this, you know, the doctor said he was going to die that week or whatever he going to be. He was dying, whatever he going to die. Sometimes God prolongs people's lives, giving them a chance to get right with him. Do you know God prolongs your lives to give you a chance to get right with him, to receive Jesus, his son who suffered and died on the cross for you, and he rose again from the dead. Do you know God give you all a chance when he spread your life? And a lot of times people die real young. But people have died all different ages. But a lot of times if God spread your life and you're supposed to be dead, sometimes God will let people live a little longer than the doctor said they're going to live. You hear me? And man, see, he saw this man come looking at him every day. It just kind of it harassed him. It bothered him. While he was dying, this man coming in just looking at him, staring at him every day. And then he'll go back out. He gone. And, then, and they could just sit up on the wall like they floating, they said. Some of them men just sit up on the wall, in the corner of the wall in the room, floating. On they, while they dying on their deathbed. Women too. And women said, look at his eyes. And some, my, my friend said, one put over her arm over her eyes like this. Said, look at his eye. Can you see him? Some of them, sometimes they be there when, you, when the people visiting them. People, I knew once my friend visited these folks that was dying. And them little men be right there in the room, they said. And this woman said, look at his eyes. Can you see him? Look at his eyes. She didn't like this little man's eyes coming in. Looking at her every day while she was dying, this lady. Come on, and one thing after another I heard. One of my friends said she was a nurse that watched people die all the time. She used to be a nurse, an old lady friend of mine I knew many years ago. Said she would watch people die and do those kind of, those kind of nurses. Said it would make her cry. Tears would come from her eyes. Watch these people dying. Because they was crying and hollering and screaming. Some of them. And talking about little men. Don't go by that, Miss Red. Don't go by that, that, that man that fires there. That fire. Can you see that man at the foot of my bed? Don't go by there. That man at the foot of my bed. Oh, that fire. The fire is in the room. The fire is at the foot of my bed, Miss Red. Don't go by there. That's the name of my friend, my old friend a long time ago. Name Red, Miss Red. Don't go by there. She said she didn't see no fire. But they saw that fire because they was dying, y'all. They were dying. Some of us, some people will, some people would die slow death. Some people die, you know, quick death, of course. You shoot the death, shot the death, all kind of ways to die a quick death, and different way to quiet to die a slow death. But as the Bible made it sure it's appointed unto men, women, boys, and girls to die. Because men, women, boys, and girls are dying every single day. Babies on up to the old people, grown up, middle aged. Teenagers, little children, on up to the old people. Everybody is dying sooner or later. Everybody got to leave this world sooner or later. It's a appointment for us all. We're going to leave this world 
Men don't do who you are. They can wish you dead. But the same one that wishing you dead, they got to die too. In the church house, neighborhood, streets, among the kin folks, wherever. Everybody got to leave this world. Everybody kin people got to leave this world. Everybody's uncles and aunties got to leave this world. Everybody's mom and daddy got to leave this world. Everybody's brother and sister got to leave this world. Everybody's children, girls or boys, sons and daughters. Got to leave this world. You hear me? Nieces and nephews got to leave this world. You hear me? Everybody is going to leave this world. You hear me? Could it me, you, everybody else, husband and wives got to leave this world. You hear me? Girlfriend and boyfriends got to leave this world. Woman friend and man friends got to leave this world. The Bible says so and it's being proven every day and night. On this earth that God made, it's appointed unto men wants to die at the death to judge men. That go for men, women, boys, and girls that live in this world too. And God got our life in his hands. And those of us that are his children, we rid all in his hands. The Bible let us know that, that we nobody can pluck us out of his hand. Nobody can pluck us out of God's hand. You hear me? Nobody can. It's appointed unto men, women, boys, and girls. Wants to die out the death to judge meant. You hear me? Woohoo! And you cannot escape death. We can put off appointments for this, put off appointment for doctor's appointments, whatever appointments we can we can we can uh, cancel that appointment. But when death comes, we cannot cancel that appointment. You hear me? And your party getting drunk and drinking and going on. <laughs> That's not the end. You must stand before God, O oh young man, the Bible said, and give an account of your life. All men and women got to give an account of their life. You hear me? Young man, young woman. You got to give an account of your life. Old man, old woman. You got to give an account of your life before God. You hear me? We all got to stand before God. It's the judgment seat of Christ and the white throne judgment of God. We got to stand before Jesus. And the Bible said, why do you set it off your brother? Why do you judge your brothers in the church? The Bible asks us that too. The Bible asks the church that. Why do you judge your brother? Why do you set it off your brother? How come you hate your, act like you hate your brother or something? Come on. <laughs> why do you set it off your brother like you hate him? But the Bible said after that, we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. All us Christians also. We got to stand before God. How we feel and treat each other in the church. Oh, yes, in the church. I'm talking about the true body of Christ, not just in the building. The Bible says there's only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. That's what the Bible said. And we all got to stand before Jesus, even in the church. You hear me? How you treat your brother, how you said it not your brother, how you judge your brother or sister, even in the church. We got to get on the count of that. So everybody going to be judged. It's appointed unto men, women, boys, and girls to die and to stand before God in judgment. That's what they mean. And judgment day is coming for all people. Judgment day is coming for everybody. And if you don't have Jesus for your Lord and Savior, if you die without Jesus, if you die without receiving Christ Jesus for your person, Lord and Savior, you will go to hell. A place of a burning fire and torment it's hotter than the summertime now. You hear me? Woohoo! This is August the 8th, 2022. On this Monday, but there's a place called hell that's a hundred times hotter. Way more hundred times hotter, a thousand times hotter than what we go through in the summertime now. On this August the 8th, 2022 on a Monday. <laughs> Hello? God is not playing with us and the devil not playing with us. You judge and worried about the preaching. You're going to wind up in hell. People die all kind of ways. I told my mother, uh, I told my wife, rather, how me and my mother, my mother too saw it with me. I said, Mama, look. I told my mama, look over there. We were driving home one day, me and my mom. And we saw this truck right at this Taco Bell, I think, over here in Lancaster, Texas, close to where we live, close to where we live, over here close to the uh, 635 Highway. The Taco Bell, I think it's Taco Brino. One of those names right there, and a guy, a man, I think, in the truck, he's right there getting rid of all of him, son, from Taco Breno or Taco Bell, whatever name it is. And we looked over there, and everybody in the saw it. That, that his truck just blew up in, in the flames. 
Just caught on fire. And no things happen for real. This this just happens. But he was sitting in there. He just blew up in flames. Just, 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 just went up in fire. Just caught on fire. And he couldn't get out fast enough. He couldn't get out. It was too fast. And we saw this man in this truck. He's getting ready to order a fast food or order a meal from Taco Bruno or Taco Bell. And his truck caught on fire before my eyes, before everybody's eyes that saw it that day, me and my mother. Taking my mother home on, you know, from the store, I, I think, that day and, and right there on Lancaster Road. Lancaster Road, it might have been called a different name, Dallas Avenue, one part of it, you know, going toward uh, Lancaster, Texas, before we got to the 635 uh, Highway, before we got to the bridge of 635, right, here in Dallas, Texas. You hear me? And I looked, and we looked. That man, he just, just in normal thing, you know, and anybody go through, drive through, order or something, you know, from, you know, McDonald's, or any place, just drive through and order something, and all of a sudden, his truck just blew up in flames. While he was sitting up in there, we saw that person die and burn to death inside his truck that day. <laughs> you don't see that too often. A lot of people don't see that too often. Some people do, but not everybody. Watch people die like that. You hear me? And that ain't the first time. I, I did security all night at a certain place where, where a lot of, um, um, you know, mature people lived, you know. A lot of older people lived, and I, I was security guard. Another older lady was security guard. She was an inside security, and I was an outside security for the parking lots. And uh, we, uh, she said she kept calling this older man that lived there, and no one answered. He went not answer the phone. He didn't answer the door. He went not answer the door, and nobody saw him nowhere else. Where else could he be in this, inside this little home right there at, at the apartment, at the minor apartment place right there? You know, right there, you know what I mean? And then Dollars, and he, uh, you know, his, his stepdaughter kept calling him, and uh, security kept calling him. I knew the security lady. She said, Will, I want you to go in first. So she had the keys to enter those doors because she was inside security. So she said, Will, I want you to go in first. You know, she was scared to go in first because she didn't know what was going on with her. His daughter didn't know either. So I went on in first. And when I went in first, she got the door open. I went in, and there that man was. He was dead. That man was sitting up on in the middle of the floor. TV still on. His TV was still going, but he was dead, y'all. I said, that's the first time I saw somebody dead like that. At that time, before I saw the man caught on fire with my mother after that. See, we don't know when death going to come. And then you want to sit around and hate somebody, and wish somebody get killed, you want somebody dead, and come on. You want somebody to be dead, but you you jump and abuse somebody, but you don't think it's supposed to be done to you. You know, you want somebody dead, but you don't you don't want to be dead for doing somebody wrong. You think God supposed to kill somebody, but you don't jump on somebody. I want to jump in and try to kill somebody, and you disrespecting your elders, you young people. Disrespect your elders, you think you supposed to keep living. Disrespecting your world and you trying to wish us dead because you know we done live longer than you and you think you got a long time to live. You don't know how long you got to live. I don't care how young you are, how many children done died, how many young people done died, young as you or younger than you. And you think you're going to live long because you're young and think you're going to keep on living disrespecting your elders and you want us dead because you know we done live a lot longer than you. You know, we, you think we about to kick the bucket anyway. <laughs> You think God about to take us out of here? We we about we close to death to you, huh? And you think you got a long time to live because you got children, small children to raise. How many small children have lost their young mamas? Mm -hmm. How many small children have lost their young daddies, whatever age their daddy was? How many small children don't have no mama or daddy? Because they dead or gone. Hello. You don't know when you're going to leave this world. You think you're going to live a long time disrespecting your elders and want to fight and jump on your elders and brag about it and want us dead because of our condition, of our hearts, or we take medicine. That go for you preachers in the church, too. That go for you true church and pastors and members in the church, too. Y'all think we're supposed to be dead because of our condition. And a lot of times, people that got a certain condition live longer than those who are so healthy in their hearts. <laughs> How many times did that happen? People live long and people they thought wasn't going to die. And the one y'all thought was supposed to be dead, not dead. <laughs> but though they were so healthy now, and they so healthy in good condition, 
Y'all thought they gonna live a long time, and all of a sudden, they dead. Bought over dead, but the word, the one that puts me, that was sick all the time, still living. Now, I seen that from my own eyes. I used to go to a church somewhere, a small church in Dollars, small church on the street called Easter Street in Dollars in Oak Cliff. I mean, I was that little small church. The other Hawkins was his name. I don't think he's living now. I don't know, but he, you know, everybody thought he was gonna die before his wife. You know, he always was sick all the time. He was an old Church of God in Christ preacher with a small church in Oak Cliff on the street called Easter Street, and uh. He supposed to be dead, folks thought. He was always in the hospital. We see his wife at church. She was in good health, you know, compared to him. She was always at church with us, you know. And he was always in the hospital, in and out of the hospital. And everybody thought he was going to die before his wife because she was always in good condition compared to his. She was always <laughs> always at church with us a lot of time. But y'all just guess who died first. See, we don't we don't have the choice who's who going to die first. God got that choice, not the pastor, not no church members, not worldly folks that want to judge our past. Nobody got that right to choose when we're going to leave this world, but God Almighty. But y'all guess who died first? That preacher wife died first. that was always in church with us, but he was always in the hospital. She died first. It's gone. I don't even remember what, what, what's wrong. See, we don't have that right. Bible said God knows we're going to leave. He know when we gonna nobody else might not know when we're gonna leave, but God do. The Bible says appointed unto men, God makes that appointment. God really makes that appointment. A lot of times doctors thought we were gonna die. Doctor could send us home to die. You hear me? <laughs> and people think, oh, the doctors and people have died. There's some people that have died and the doctor said they were gonna die, but not everybody. Sometimes the doctors don't know. <laughs> but God know. God know everything. Doctors don't know everything. They write about something, but not everything. Nobody knows us like God. Nobody knows our heart like God. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it but God? Y'all can be smiling, grin, and act like you're a friend. But got hate and jealousy and envy and racism and prejudice toward us in your heart. But you act like you're our friend. No, you racist. <laughs> no, you racist. Racism is in your heart to the end. But you're playing like you're our friend. A lot of y'all have sex with folks and racist toward them folks you have sex with. And kiss and marry folks and you racist toward folks you marry. Because that heart of yours. Come on, it's got racism in it. Everything else is evil. Come on. <laughs> but God knows the heart. And when God got the final say, God got the first and last say over the doctors, over being the pastors, over in the church, over anybody. Woohoo! The way the Bible says, upon it. God makes the appointment. God made us, and he made us for his kingdom. We are in this world to serve God. We are in this world to live for God, but when we don't, that's our choice, and God give us a chance. Some of us keep on living when the doctor say we're not going to live. Some of us uh, live longer when, when they send us home to die because God giving us a chance to turn to him. He giving us a chance to live for him and to change our mind and repent. And receive his son for our personal Lord and Savior to change our life. Hello. Because you will die. I don't care who you are looking at me or wherever you are not looking at me. You going to die. Black, white, Mexican, Latino, Hispanic, Indian, Oriental, Native American, Asian, Chinese, Japanese, whatever need be it me. Wherever you are, German, whatever you are, Polish, wherever. Well, no matter what race, African, Jamaican, uh, uh, no matter what you are, you European, wherever you are, if you are born, you are born to die. All of us are born to die. You will leave this world. I don't care who and what you are. Celebrity, rich or poor, police, the FBI, mafia, Illuminati, underworld crime. <laughs> you hear me? You going to leave this world. World, it's been proven all through the history of the world. Everybody leave here, bud. The Caesars, the kings and queens, everybody leaves this world. It's proven. They left this world, you and I, we got to leave. You got to leave. But the question is, have you accepted Jesus Christ for your Lord and Savior? Do you believe the gospel that Jesus was born of the Virgin Mary and of the Holy Ghost and that he grew up in this world? And that he served his God and Father in heaven and, his, and mankind by doing good to mankind. But he came to suffer and down the cross for our sins. 
and that he rose again from the dead to save us from our, from our sins and to give us salvation to go to heaven. You got to believe that with all your heart and be baptized in his name. Be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You hear me? And receive Jesus Christ for your personal Lord and Savior to go to heaven. That's what you got to do. By what race or what color you are, God has no respect to race or color. A people, nothing. I don't care what you are. FBI, police, president of the United States. You got to repent and receive Jesus for your personal Lord and Savior to go to heaven. King or queen, prince or princess, whatever you are. <laughs> no matter where you are, everybody got to die all over this planet, all over this world, all over this earth. But the question is, where you're going when you die? That's the question. Are you going to heaven or are you going to hell? That's the question. Have you received Jesus for your personal Lord and Savior? That's the question. If you do me wrong, lie on me, everybody believe your lie and everything. But God knows the truth about me, you, and everybody. No matter what lies be told on us, God knows the truth. And when you're trying to curse us, trying to make us not have a job, or trying to make us not have the possession God bless us with, God will and he's able to bless us more. Right in your face. Hello. He shall, he shall supply all our needs, those of us who turn to him. Have you turned to him? Have you received Jesus Christ for your personal Lord and Savior? Are you trying to judge me or the every other preacher or every other child of God? Have you received Jesus? Have you judged yourself? Have you received Jesus for your personal Lord and Savior? Are you trying to judge me and other preachers and other children of God? Have you received Christ for your personal Lord and Savior? That's the question for you because you're going to stand before God by yourself. Don't make no difference how many friends you have. Men don't how many folks love you all over this world. You got to stand before God by yourself. Princess Diana, got to stand before God by herself. All these other folks y'all love, former actors, former actresses that died, that y'all admired, loved so much, and made statues of or whatever. They got to stand before God by themselves. Nobody can stand with them either. They were just human. That's why they died. Why do you think you died? Because you're still human. No matter how many muscles you got, how do you know how to fight Bruce Lee? Bruce Lee, the famous fighter long ago. He had to die. Everybody got to die. You live long enough, you're going to get old. Look, look who done got older. Chuck Norris done got older. Famous Kung Fu fighter. He done got older. A whole lot of people. We live long enough, we're going to get old, but we still got to die when we're young old. And Bruce Lee died young. And many folks growing to be old. Me, Chuck Norris, many others. Come on. Even uh, uh, Muhammad Ali, he became old. See, we got to die, whether we die young or we die old. We got to die. It's a point unto men wants to die after death of judgment. We all got to stand before God. Send the podia, many people. We got to give an account to God. If we receive the son or not, if they didn't, they went to hell. Because Muhammad is not the way. Uh, Buddha not the way. Holly Clemson is not the way. Uh, Mary, whoever that is, your uh, virgin Mary was not Jesus' mama. That's not the way. The Pope is not the way. You hear me? And your church denomination, the Bible says one law, one faith, one baptism. Ain't no many church names with Jesus. Ain't no many denominations with Jesus. Ain't no many faiths with Jesus. Oh, what faith for you? No, no, no. It's only one law, one faith, one baptism. Hello? And Muhammad, Muhammad Allah is not the way. All these other religions is not the way. Allah is not the way. Hello? Woohoo! Only Jesus Christ, God's Son, is the way of salvation. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody else, no other religion, nothing and nobody else, no other religion. It's a relationship. It's, like it's a fellowship. God said fellowship with him. And the only way we fellowship with him is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, his Son, God the Father, Son. Hello. Have you accepted Jesus for your personal Lord and Savior? Let me tell you how. This is the way to do it. Because it's a point of the man wants to die. Out to death to judge men. They go for man, woman, boy, and girl. And it's happening every day. And it's going to happen to you. It's going to happen to me. It's going to happen to your children and your grandchildren. Sooner or later, get ready, get ready, get ready. Hello. Repeat these words after me for salvation. Mean it from your heart. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. I receive you, Jesus. I've heard the word of God. I've heard the gospel. From this preacher or any other preacher, I've heard the gospel that you suffer, Lord Jesus, for my sin, that you died and rose again for my sin and for my salvation. I believe in you, Lord Jesus. I believe you did these things for me. And I receive, Lord Jesus, what you've done only 
for my salvation. Say these words with me, y'all. Come on, just say it. Just say it. Do it for yourself. Just say it. Say, Lord, I receive you for my personal Lord and Savior right now. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my personal Lord and Savior. Do it right now. Before you leave this world, before you breathe your last breath, say, Lord, I do accept you. I believe in you. And I accept you, Jesus, for my personal Lord and Savior. And I call upon you, Lord, to save me. And I repent of my sin because I receive you, Jesus, for my personal Lord and Savior right now, Lord Jesus. And I should forgive me of all my sins and save me, Father God, and fill me with the Holy Ghost. Pray this prayer. Just pray that prayer, y'all. Right now in the name of Jesus. And if you pray that prayer, Upon the authority of the Holy Bible, God's word that I just read from and preached to you from, you are saved. When you believe what you just prayed, and many from your heart what I told you and guide you how to pray that prayer. If you prayed that prayer that I told you to help you try to pray that. If you receive Jesus, if you receive it and meant what you prayed, what I just told you how to pray, then you are saved. Because God said, whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you prayed that prayer, young man, woman, boy, girl, no matter what race or color you are, you are saved. And God loves you right now forever. God loves you and wants to save you before you leave this world. God wants to save you before you die. God wants to save you and give you eternal life starter right now. And he have done it for you if you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart. And he will come. He's already came into your heart when you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart. Remember, the Bible says, appointed to men, women, boys, and girls wants to die at the death of judgment. That God got a work and ministry for you to do. When you prayed that prayer and meant it from your heart. God bless. Bye.